I just, before I invite our amazing, uh, I want to say panel, it's not a panel, but two amazing women on the stage here really quick. Uh, actually, just come on the stage. I want to share something before you guys transition here. This is my amazing wife, Michelle, Pastor Michelle here, our amazing worship pastor, Harley Gervais. And I just want to say this because I, I shared this, take a seat here. I, I shared this yesterday when I was in Montreal. I always introduce my wife even if she's not traveling with me. And uh, I always say the, the similar things. I say, like, you know, my, my wife is a first-degree black belt in jiu-jitsu. She's a, she's a black belt in kickboxing, and she teaches this. And I say, so, and I, and I talk about my kids and how they're also all in jiu-jitsu and kickboxing. I say, you don't want to mess with our family because you'll get, you'll, you'll, you'll get beat up. And then I, I said, and also I said, on our executive team, we have a judge. So you don't want to mess with our church either. And so I'm just so grateful for these two amazing women up here. And uh, I just believe they're going to bring it today. So let's just give them a warm welcome expectation. Wow. I didn't think of that. That's, Me that's, neither. That's pretty good. Only good Pastor Sean. Huh? Yes. yes. Only Pastor Sean. Well, this is fun. I feel like this is just like usual, yes. but in Andrean's chairs. Is this your chairs? Yeah, there you go. It's just like, I feels feel like right like, at home. Yeah, this morning I feel, I was telling Pastor Michelle, I feel like this morning it's going to be Oprah meeting Michelle Obama. <laughs> but <laughs> our first lady is Michelle <laughs> Gaby, so it's even better. <laughs> and I have to say, I feel like, I have to confess, I feel like I got tricked. Why? Because my contract said that I was supposed to interview you. And then, yes, my contract, my, my verbal contract with Pastor Sean. And then suddenly on social media, I see, oh, two conversa conversations with of two course. moms. And I'm like, what? Who made this happen? <laughs> of course. Yes. I'm like, oh, no, 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 I'm not getting interviewed. <laughs> We're having a conversation together. We are. I know, I know you're going to ask some questions, yeah. but I, I prefer... Yeah, yes, conversation a chit chat. Then. A chit -chat yeah. yeah, you're all good. <laughs> good, awesome. Okay, awesome. okay. Let's start with the very spiritual, deep question. Okay. Okay, I have very serious qu question. So, are you an early bird or a night owl? <laughs> this is very night owl. Yes. Earl any early birds in the house? Yeah. Wow. With the night owls. Yes. <laughs> Oh, good balance. Yeah. That I think I'm an early bird. Yes, I am an early bird. Okay, your favorite holidays, Thanksgiving or Christmas? Christmas. Oh, for real, huh? Any Christmas? Um, yes. Oh. Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Without the, a what doubt, is Christmas. You need revival, Harley. Um yeah, Chris, Christmas with the decorations, but because we lived in the States, we celebrate Thanksgiving two times, oh, okay. the American and the Canadian. So, but I agree, Christmas. Okay. Dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Milk chocolate. Oh, yes. But That's I'll take dark chocolate too. I love both. No, I leave it to Jean. I love both. I, I, I like agree. to have dark chocolate and then finish it off with milk chocolate. Like the dark chocolate, oh. like the, the healthy thing I do. And then, but I need to end it with something sweet. There is so a technique. So then I take the milk chocolate That's after. That's good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Any dark chocolate? It's like the chocolate? meal and the dessert. Any dark chocolate? Oh, okay. You can repent <laughs> at the end of the experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay, my last super deep spiritual question is, would you rather time travel to the past or the future? Pass. Oh, really? Oh, yeah? for sure. You have to tell me why. I would take way more risk. Oh, yeah. wow. Because I, I just see so much now, like, overthinking it and having fear. Like, when I see my kids fail, I see as a parent, I, when I see them fail, I'm like, wow, wasn't that an amazing learning experience? And I get super excited. I'm like, okay, so but now you remember for the next time. Like, remember, that's like something in your toolbox. They don't see it like that right away. But on the outside, looking in, you're like, wow, that's an amazing. They'll never make that mistake again, you know? That's good. And so I'm like, man, just imagine God sees us like that. Yeah. You're like, just do it. Just do it. If you fail, it's going to be the biggest lesson learned that's going to be like, it's going to make you smarter. It's going to make you wiser. You know, your social skills are going to get sharpened. Everything, right? And I just, I, I just wish I would just take way more risk and not care what people think. 
and just really not care what people think, not live for others, but for myself. And I know that in turn, it will bless others, right? If you live your true, authentic self, you will in the end bless others. It's not selfish. It's like a lie. And so, yeah, definitely go with Lorna Pass. And I love how your first reaction was to go straight to your children, your household. Because you do love your children and you do love your household. And you are such a role model in, in this aspect and several other aspects. Which leads me to ask you, um, so what is the most important thing that you want to establish in your home? For me, this is easy. It's a relationship with God. I know it sounds cliche. As every Christian, of course, we want our kids to have a relationship with God. Yeah, what does that mean? I just really don't Mm -hmm. want it to be a religion. Mm -hmm. I really don't want it to have a family where we pray at night and go to church on Sunday morning, and when it's really bad, then we pray. I really want it to be a relationship. And when I told my kids when they were young, I said to them, just because mommy's friends with Jesus doesn't mean you're friends with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Just because mommy's going to heaven doesn't mean you're going to heaven. I know you hear the talk at church of heaven, going to heaven, but I don't know if you're going. I'm going. I'm friends with Jesus. I don't know if you are. Wow. Wow. And then I keep saying, like, how do you become friends with Jesus yeah. is you have to talk. You're friends with Kilani because yeah. you talk with Kilani. Yeah. You talk with your friends. So for me, that's always been the main thing before pushing Bible stories, before pushing anything else relationships with Jesus. Talk to him. Are you talking? So I'll ask him before bed sometimes. I'm like, did you talk to Jesus today? Did you ask God about that? Mm -hmm. What does God say about that? Mm -hmm. And I think the best way, I could say all those things, but the best way to teach your kids or anybody is to model it. Yeah, that's good. Like we can't preach it. We have to model it. And so I make sure that with our family, we're pretty like real and transparent with our relationship with God. Um, I've, I've told them many times, like, they'll see me pray when I'm happy or sad mm-hmm. or mad. Mm-hmm. They'll hear me work it through with God. They'll, w- they'll hear me in the shower. They'll be like, oh, mommy's talking, yeah. praying to God or whatever. Um, they'll, they'll hear me s- ask God for simple things, ask God for a parking spot. Yeah. And then being like, oh, you know, I, yeah. it's just in the yeah. everyday conversation, it's just, Jesus is among us. Let's not talk, pretend that he's not there. For me, it's like I want it to be that God is so real that he's right there. How I view my relationship with God is like we're there and we're holding hands. Mm -hmm. And we're together. And so how can I not acknowledge him throughout the day? Like we can't do that. And I love that one time, what, like, some, one of my daughters said, like, oh, no, Jesus is sitting there. Or Jesus is playing with me right now. And I'm like, yes, like, this is good. Like, this is what I want them to do. And I remember when I first became a Christian, um, I would, like, give God these big hugs. <laughs> I'd give myself a big hug <laughs> to give God a big hug. I love it. And, you know, I did it. <laughs> I but, you know, I'm still new in my relationship with God. And, 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 you know, part of me is still doubting a bit. Like, you know, you're like, yeah. I'm doing it because I love God, but I'm not sure if I, God is actually, like, receiving my hugs, you know? And I'm not, I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just happy to give God these hugs. Mm-hmm. And we went to this conference. It was, like, a prophetic conference, and um, there was people giving prophetic words. If you don't know what a prophetic word is, it's simply hearing God's voice mm-hmm. for somebody mm-hmm. and sharing an encouraging word. Um, it's so they we believe that God speaks today because he's the same God yesterday today and tomorrow so God still speaks right it's just a matter of recognizing his voice and so people will do this right especially in our church culture if you've been here long enough we hear God's voice and we share God's thoughts Mm -hmm. and um, so I went into this booth and this girl was just kind of like "Ah, I know this is really simple I'm really just getting this one thing for you I just feel like God is like, I see you giving God these big hugs, and wow. God so <laughs> loves wow. your hugs. Love it. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? Yeah. You know what's crazy, eh? Yeah. I didn't catch it at first. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't catch it at first. I was like, oh, that's odd. And that's all she gave me. I'm like, I'm sorry. That's all I have. So I walk, and I'm driving in the car, and all of a sudden, I'm like sinking my seat. I'm like, the reality hits me. I, I, like, it hit me. 
I'm like, oh my gosh, you're receiving my hugs. I, it just, it, it like, I was like, and God just, just another level of God's realness of like, oh my God, this is real. This is really, really yes. real. God is, the God of the universe yes. Yes. is receiving my hugs. Yes. And, and let me just tell me, this is for you too. Yeah. Everything we're sharing, this yeah. is for you and available for you as well. And I was just kind of like, God is so close. And that's the kind of relationship I want my kids to have. So that, you know, you could be quick to repent, quick to, to have good conviction. I want them to live with good conviction. And that happens when you know God's there. How can you go and do something bad or, like, lie? And when you know God is literally there being like, really? <laughs> really? You know? And I've had to, and I explain that to my kids. Like, you know, you're going to have so many thoughts. Because I don't want them to be in shame. I want them to be real. Like, Amen. you're going to have so many thoughts that are going to cross your mind that are not yours. Yeah. You know, the enemy will plant these thoughts. There's, you know, we'll judge we'll we'll see something and we'll just have thoughts coming and i'm like i know they're not all mine because i know my heart and i know god's with me and i'm like that's not god but it's just these things that we either pick up or just from our flesh or the enemy gives us these stupid ideas but it's how quick well how quick are we going to be do with those thoughts right and i want my kids to know like be be quick like you just judge this person be quick what do you do with it oh shoot god you love this person that's that's that was just this person's probably better than me. This person's, it's yeah, fine, yeah. Lord, you know? Yeah. And you're just, I do this all day long, right? Just out to make loud? sure. You do it out loud? No, I, I sometimes out loud and sometimes in my head, just yeah. most of the time in my head, but even out loud so that the kids will see it. So if I judge, my, my, Sean knows. I'll say these radical statements and he hears me like not long after, like repenting, retract those words. <laughs> I repent, you know? right? And I'll just like retract, take back my words. I repent, God, I give it to you, you know? And, and so then I don't stand in my own judgment. So then I don't reap what I've sown. And that's, you know, that's really important because that's a really real thing that people don't realize that we reap what we sow, even in our words and our judgment. And I don't want that for my kids, right? So it's like, okay, so you said that comment, you don't want to reap that. You don't want that to come back around you. So just cancel the words. Just yeah. That was something that came out of your flesh. But it's okay. You're human. We're human, yeah, right? There's grace, there's grace yeah. right? So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I, I, um, when you mentioned that you imagine God next to you, it reminded me of something I experienced when uh, I was in the States. So, for those of you who uh, don't know me, uh, my husband and I, we lived in the States, Washington, D.C., for four years between 2011 and 2015. Um, and it was it was interesting season. And I remember I was home with the kids. And for a strange reason, I just felt lonely. Even being a Christian and a worship leader and you know, involved in kids, I still felt so lonely, and I felt discouraged, and um, and I remember that morning, I said, Jesus, I just want you to be real. Just figure it out. <laughs> Find a way to show me that you are real, and I know you're real. It's like the yeah. the head knows yeah. But the heart is like, uh, it's, it's hard right now. I just, I just need you to do something real. And, uh, you know, I wasn't working. I was taking care of the kids. Um, but my oldest was uh, in kindergarten. So I'm doing my everyday thing. So I'm driving him and, and, the, and the, the other one in the car. And I'm just speaking out loud, like you just told us. And I'm like, Jesus. But I'm, I'm whispering. There's a loud music, and I'm just whispering. And I'm like, Jesus, just show me that you're real. Anything. And my kids suddenly, so Eli was five and Luca was three. Suddenly they're like, Mommy! Mommy, mommy. And I'm like, there's a spider. And there's, it's the <laughs> only know, reason right? the they're the going to scream. It's because there's a oh spider. I'm going to have to leave the car with the kids. Joking. Um, so, and they're like, 
Jesus, mommy, Jesus, Jesus is standing next to you, both of them at the same time. Jesus is, is just sitting next to you, mommy, Je Jesus. And I just cried. I just cried because I'm like, man, first of all, I don't need to be at church to see and feel Jesus. I don't need to be in the quiet place in the prayer. You know, the perfect condition that sometimes we believe, okay, I'm going to pray when the house is going to be clean, the kids are in bed, everything is perfect, then I'm going to pray. No, 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 no. I was driving, talking to God, and he just met me in yeah, my that, everyday. Yeah. And that's our oh, Jesus, God, huh? That's so exactly what he did yeah. with the woman at the well. Yeah. She was busy. She was like, that was part of her daily life, daily life, to just go to the well and get water. That was just like every day, the same way that we go to work every day, or the same way that we cut vegetables for our kids, or the same way that we go to school and we study. And Jesus met that woman in the busyness of her day. Every he met day. her. Yeah. And one, set, one conversation completely changed her life. And I'm like, this is what Jesus wants to do for us every day, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So I Absolutely. love that you are raising and teaching your kids to, to have conversation with him. It's, it's so deep. Because that's how encounters happen, right? Wow. Like, I want them to yeah. have these encounters because the world is going to tell them it's not true. It's yeah. not real. Yeah. Right? So yeah. their encounters, what they have with God has to be more real. Yeah. Where it doesn't matter what people say, right? Yeah. They'll stand on their own if they have to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I'm seeing that with their friend because they led one of their friends to the Lord, our yeah. neighbor. Yeah. And she's had encounters, strong encounters with God. Yeah. And um, she's literally in a school right now where no, every, nobody believes. And she's, she's being persecuted hard in her school, and she's still standing strong. In fact, she wants to make the T-shirts. I'm like, actually, I want it. it just makes me want to take a T-shirt and saying, like, Jesus loves me. Jesus Aww. is real. Like, like, she just Love wants it. to make these statements, like, and she, conf and she doesn't care. Despite everything that's happening to her at school, losing friends and everything, she's not turning her back because the – you know, when you experience the realness of yeah, God, you that's can't it. go back. That's it. You can't. Or yeah. some people do. But it, it's a matter of time, yeah. eventually. Yeah. You know? But yeah, that's it. Or I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't want to mess with God. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. I want him on my side. Yes. And I want to be on his side. Are you getting this? This is so good. We can just talk to God. So you mentioned that... Um, lies we we all live in the world you know we're not in our bubbles so we have to deal with some lies and find the truth and can you talk to me a little bit about you know revelations that maybe recently you have regarding some of the lies that you believed and you weren't even aware of it well yes well there's if i mean there's always you're always impacting lies yeah. right um one of the things about having a relationship with God is recognizing the voice of, of God. Yeah. It helps, right? It helps so you don't feel it's just a one-way conversation all the time. You know? I don't like so being yeah. on the receiving end of that, yeah. and I'm sure God doesn't like being on the receiving end of that either. I'm sure he has things to share. And um, my, Pastor Sean, my husband, has amazing um, schools training on this and how to recognize the voice of God plug in like if yeah, you haven't done Sean school this is your your little like ding 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 do Sean school okay um it's just a matter of recognizing God's voice because God speaks to all of his children that's a promise in the bible and God doesn't lie and um it's a matter of recognizing and there's different ways that God speaks yeah. to us yeah. but before reckon before all that you just have to first you have to believe that he's obviously real mm -hmm. Um, and we, ha we are usually the one to make the first move. I always see it like that. We have to do the first move because God's always been doing the first move. Since we're born, God's been at the door. He's been showing up. He's been talking to us. Yeah. So it's a matter of us showing up. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a matter of us showing up. When I became a believer, I just, my friend of mine led me to the prayer of salvation, and I did it as a Catholic. I was like, oh, this can't be so bad, you know? 
But when I left her house, I said, God, I'm going for two weeks, going to pray and talk to you, but I want, I'm going to hear. I'm not going to forget my prayers, right? Because sometimes we do that. We could talk to God, but we forget. We get the business of life. God's been showing you guys all these things. He's been screaming in your face, but because of life and your, the dullness of our senses, we, we, did, we just don't recognize God's voice. And we just, we, we, God's been, we're like, God didn't show up, then didn't do anything. It's like, oh my gosh. That, 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 that was all God. Did you not see that, recognize that? No, and that's normal when you first become a believer, right? So I said, I'm going to actually pray and pay very, like, strong attention to your voice. So I had, I made the first move because God was already speaking. He has been waiting, like, my whole life for me to say that, right? And so those two weeks, like, completely changed my life because, yes, God was revealing himself to me in many different ways in many different ways. And so I I'm, could be really good at hearing God's voice for other people sometimes, but hearing for myself sometimes I struggle. And um, yeah, I just want to say, um, because it's, it, for me it's key, you said I have to make the first move. And that reminds me of Revelation 3, 20, 21. And it says, it's Jesus speaking. He said, I stand at the door. I knock. Hear me call and open the door. And I'll come right in and sit down to supper with you. And I, yeah, I, for me, I just want to share the fact that this is key. He's at the door and he's knocking all the time. He's there, like you said, from the beginning. What we have to do is open the door. It's for us to open the door. And as soon as we say yes to him and we open the door, then he's going to sit down and he's going to have this, this conversation. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Continue. No, no. And so I was like, God, I'm, I, sometimes I have a hard time hearing for myself, mm-hmm. right? Because there's a lot of emotions. Um, sometimes there's blockages for various different reasons. And you're not the only one. Can, can we be honest? Yeah. Right? Sometimes it's hard to yeah. hear God for Some, ourselves. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Because sometimes there's, we, we, still, we do have lies that we believe about ourselves. Mm-hmm. And we do have belief system within ourselves that are not of God. And sometimes that could be a hindrance. In stopping you from hearing God, it's almost like you, you you muffle your ear in certain areas where you can't hear God, or you don't believe that He will speak in that area of your life, yeah. or you feel like you're undeserving that He speaks to you in that play, area of your life, or there's too much shame around. Like there's no way, there's so much shame in that area of my life that like I can't even face God with this, let alone hear Him, yeah. right? And so I was sitting at my bed, and I was, I, I've been wanting to make these big decisions. And I was like, just, this is just recently, actually. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, God, like, I have a hard time listening for myself. And I felt a little bit like, you know, I'm a pastor. <laughs> I feel like w- I should be beyond this. Yeah. And I felt a bit of like. Yeah, and, and just to, because I don't want to say, I want, I want to be practical for maybe First comers, you're you're wondering like, but what does that mean to hear God? To hear right? Do you hear an audible voice? Do you like yeah. what does that mean? Are you taking your meds and that day you're I you know, didn't take it I know, right? I know. Can we be like practical? I know because I can be right? weird, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's 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 funny because we I brought Harvest to the doctor. Anyways, she was telling the doctor all about the visions and the pictures and the things that God was sharing her, and I was like. Okay, and then she was, like, talking about the ones that were scary. And I was like, oh, my gosh. But you have, like, good ones, right? Like, you see, like, and then I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, I saw a little cross on her thing, and I'm like, we're Christians, we're believers, we believe, like, we we believe God, like, speaks to us. And, like, I kind of, like, helped her understand. But if not, she could have looked like a crazy little girl who gets these visions, good visions and bad visions, (laughs) <laughs> and maybe that's why her heartbeat's been beating super yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so different ways to hear God. And this is accessible to everybody, huh? 
we don't have to be a pastor. No, no. Not at all. We don't have to pray three times a day. Actually, Jesus, God, they, like God wants to have a relationship with us. He wants us to hear his voice and to exchange, to have a com conversation. So there are different ways of hearing God. I know you are a feeler knower. Yeah. So God, so it could be through your, your just too quickly. Yeah. Like it could be, this year has, like it's just you guys, you and Sean. Yeah. And that's yeah. The I'm a, I'm a have, dreamer. Which is dreams, yes. visions. It could be your, through your strong imagination. It could feel like it's your imagination sometimes. And yeah. I'm sure that sometimes it's, have to, you have to discern that as well. It could be through, Yes, open vision, open vision, close eyes, you close your eyes and you have a picture that came out of nowhere. Um, and then, yes, there's the, the no, there's and then nowhere. there's hearing God's voice. Some people actually hear God. Yeah. And sometimes it's through their thoughts. It's mm -hmm. like a random thought that came through. Like you're, you knew that, that, you know, that's not your own thought. You're thinking of something and then this other thought that just comes and it's like way louder and clearer, and just like, you know that you know that's that was not me, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that was God. Yes, yeah. or maybe you think, yeah, I'm super smart, that's brilliant, oh, and that's probably God. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the feeler, where you just feel everything, you yes. feel emotions, you feel it. You walk into a room, you could feel depressed all of a sudden. It's not you, it's the atmosphere. Yeah. You could feel people's anxiety. Uh, I have a daughter who's a strong, strong feeler. Mm -hmm. And if you walk, and people have been saying that since she's a baby, people will be like, I feel she looks at me and she could just like, <laughs> she knows all my sins. <laughs> or she just like knows everything I've done or she just, she sees through me. She sees stuff that no one sees. But she actually, as she grows up, yes, she does. She feels people. Yeah. She, you could come in being the happiest person in the room. She doesn't buy it. She'll come at me and be like, this person's really sad. And sure enough, that person later that night will divulge like they're going through some really hard things. But she saw it. She saw the sadness. She didn't see the happy smile. She just felt sadness, strong sadness when she saw that person. And so that's one of the ways. And then there's the knower where you, you don't know why you just know. Oh, the knower. You, you just know. And then the seers, <laughs> the like Sean or people, will be like, yes. well, back it up. What? What, like, yes. what makes you want to say that? But exactly. it's like, no, I just know. Yeah. I just yeah. know it. It's like your gut. Yeah. It's like your, you just know it. You just, you, you, you can't really explain why. Yeah. It's just inside of you. And that one's really tricky to discern because it could feel like your Absolutely. own thoughts. It could feel like your own, your own feelings. It could feel like, it could just feel like you. So it's really hard to discern. So that was a really hard journey for me yeah. as a knower. I mean, God will speak to you through all four, mm -hmm, all of them. I have dreams. I have visions. I have all those things. But there's always a the one or two that's mm -hmm. your, your predominant. And I remember I was walking with a, its renowned, like, uh, Canadian prophet, yeah. Stacey, Stacey Campbell. Campbell. Yeah. Mm. And we're on the streets ministering to people. And I think I was having a bit of a hard time. I was a newer believer at that time. And she, she must have discerned something. She just, and I looked up to her because, like, she gets these crazy, wild, prophetic words for people. And I'm intimidated by it because I'm like, God must be, like, yelling in her ear all these stuff, right? <laughs> and I'm like, sure, that's easy when it's like that, right? Um, and she just stops out of nowhere, and she turns at me, I'm like, Michelle, you know, I really feel like you're like me. I feel like you're a knower. And, you know, when I get a prophetic word, it just, I just, I just get this little feeling of knowing. Yeah. And it's just, I just know. And it's just this, this silent kind of little nudge from God. And then I lean into that. And then when I do, I've, I've learned to trust that that was God. And then all of this, and then the whole world opens up from there, and God fills her mouth. She just is obedient with that little nudge, and she just starts to open her mouth and go with the little that she has, and as she goes, it, God just fills her mouth. And it so encouraged me. I felt so seen by God yeah, yeah. that, like, we look at these people, like, they're like, whoa, God must be, like, screaming in their ear. But, yes, they've went through the process yeah. Yeah. of trying to recognize the voice of God, and it could seem so subtle. But as you're faithful with it, that's when you start to discern. 
and to 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 refine your your I call it like almost like these gifts, these special like I don't know, yeah. it's just so special. But yeah, that's yeah. good. And I've learned to respect the voice of Honora. Jean, my husband, is Honora. And uh, uh, let me tell you, when a dreamer meets a nor, uh, <laughs> it's it's interesting. Uh, uh, do Do you remember <laughs> when I when I left? Um, we left for the states recently to adopt the babies, and I'm a dreamer. So it means that, uh, and the reason why I'm I'm probably a dreamer is because God is like, it's the only moment she's going to shut up. So I'll just gonna talk to her. At night. <laughs> um, but so I had, I had the dream since I was 10 about adopting the twins. I even had, you know, the color of the eyes, everything. Like, so I have the big picture. Now the word is coming to place. So we have to go. We have to leave quickly to go to the States to get the babies. We'll, we'll be gone for three days. Yeah, we're and we're like, home. yeah, we're gone for two weeks. So Michelle comes to my house, you know, the Nora comes to the dreamer. And, and I'm like, oh, we're gone for two weeks and we're back. And, and <laughs> she, she's just like, what, how did you say it? Uh, as a Nora, uh, she, she just had this feeling of like, you know, Harley, sometimes we hit um, uh, roadblocks so and road closures and it's it takes longer and yeah i'm like but you're still gonna have your promise yeah you're still gonna but it could be take yeah. a bit of going through some obstacles <laughs> and i was I'm trying like, to be very nice about yeah, it she's, she, and i'm like huh no no no, no. i'm going there for two I, weeks i, I saw the I word the, the word you know when you give a word and people receive it and it, it just goes and it melts in i gave the word and went boing on the ground on the ground i was like Oh, and she's trying again, and I'm like, uh-uh, I have I'll, a dream. I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I, I'm like, uh, it's okay. My job is I'll just to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm just yes. going to pray for her. I'm just going to pray, and I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be there. When yeah, I'll be there. And she was there. But it, it's this. It's the same thing. The the knowers will tell you, I and and I love my husband, but I at the same time I hate this sentence. It's like, I don't have peace. And that's the thing with a knower. You just I'm like, don't do you have, have a dream? Peace. Do you have a vision? Do you have no? So go back with your peace. No, <laughs> I I learned. Yeah, as a knower, yeah, the peace is a big thing. You have peace about the, or sometimes you just can't see it. You're like, mm, I can't, see, I can't picture it happen. Yeah. You're like, ah, I can't see it. No. Yes, yeah. I know. So so I let's go back, go back to <laughs> <laughs> big detour. But it's just to show you. I think the irony is that. We think that because Pastor Michelle is a pastor and she's married to a loud, big voice, prophetic voice, that it, yeah. it's easy. It's like, I should, I should recognize the voice of God. I, but yes, and that's why I love community, too. Yeah. And in community, and you have a like-minded community, same DNA, we could help each other and all of that. Absolutely. But Absolutely. in this specific time, I was sitting on the edge of my bed, and I'm like, God, I'm having a hard time hearing from you. And then I just leave, and I, I get up off of my bed, and I see a book that I've never noticed. I have a couple books beside my bed, and I see a book that just, you know, it's just highlighted. It's just like it's like jumping at me, and it says, God talks. And I never noticed it there before. I don't know. Did you put it there? Well, I don't know where you got that book. I don't even know where it comes from. It comes from Arizona. Okay, so we got in Arizona. Somehow you put it on my side of the bed. And... Um, it said, God talks. And, you know, I just felt, I'm, I'm grabbing the book. I felt beyond me. I just grabbed a book. I'm just flipping through. And then something made me, like, stop here just randomly. And it's this minister, this, like, um, minister. And he's, like, he's, uh, what's his name? Ed Rush. Ed Rush, yes. And he prophesies. He ministers to people all the time. And he's, like, big guy, Right. And the sentence that I read is like, I'm, in a, I'm really good at hearing God's voice for people. Actually, I would say I'm in like 11 out of 10. But for hearing God for myself, I'm not as good. Wow. And I was like, whoa, whoa. thank you, God. You know, like I was like, I didn't feel alone. I was like, wow, okay, this is normal. This is normal. Like it's a journey with God. You never arrive. It's definitely a journey where you're always figuring it out. And um, I, so I've been doing this book which is really good. 
and uh, when I told you about it, you're like, well, it's a lot with the whole sozo ministry. Yeah, yeah. But it's about exposing lies. So you're asking God, like, you know, wh- what lie do I believe about blank, myself? And we do what have the questions the tr- yeah. because it's very practical. Yeah. If you guys want to do this at home, guys, yeah. I strongly encourage you. So what lie do I believe about blank, myself? Every day you could do a different topic. It could be wh- what I would say start about myself. And then what's, what, God, what's the truth about yeah. myself? Mm-hmm. And let God speak to you. Mm-hmm. So you get quiet, you pick get a journal, and you ask God. You just quiet your mind, you quiet your thoughts, and you ask God to speak to you. And then, um, then you go through, then you do all that, you write all that down, and you go, okay, God, now I released a lie. I released a lie. And then you start declaring the truth. God, I received the truth that I am so-and-so. And you do that with everything. God, what lie do I believe about you, God? Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. lie do I believe about my future? What lie do I believe about my finance? All those things, you go through that. Anyways, God talks, Ed Rush. I don't want to take the credit. But it, anyways, I've been doing that. And but it just really the, highlighted to me yeah. that I'm like, I could see why those things would be roadblocks. Yeah. Yeah. The more lies that you expose. Yeah the more you start to walk in the truth and you're able to really hear God better for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that's very, that's been a powerful journey for me. And I've just started and I've seen major breakthrough. Yeah. Wow. That, that is so practical. I hope you are getting this and you know, it doesn't take very long to do this. No, it's, it's very, it's very quick. And um, I know uh, Pastor Michelle quickly mentioned Sozo. Uh, it, it's just um, an inner healing ministry um, uh, with, with the goal and the purpose to um, bring you closer to God by removing lies. And um, why are we releasing lies? It's because there, it's, it's like baggage. It's... it's, it's unnecessary like we 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 don't need it it's it's just heavy and we need to get rid of those lies and receive the truth and that last step is very key it's key because Jesus God will always give you something bigger than what you choose to give him and Jesus modeled it in the sense that we read in the Bible that Jesus said, I have to go, but something more powerful will come. And that's the Holy Spirit. So once you identify the lies that you believe, get rid of it. And I do this with my kids, huh? I, I do this. I'm like, just imagine in front of you a big basket and put all the lies. Put them. And then give them to Jesus and make sure that you receive something more powerful. And my encouragement is when you're going to do this, I really encourage you to do it. You're going to hear from God. So some of you, you're going to see a picture of like maybe some lie or maybe you're going you're gonna to hear a word or trust what you're going to hear, feel, see. Trust it. Don't over-process. Like, just trust. God really, really speaks. Till, um, till, yeah. So, that's good. I love this. Um, let's, because I want to have time to pray for people. But you mentioned that uh, recently this is what you've been doing. Can you talk a little bit about another haha moment in your like haha tada um, moment that really changed? Not haha, okay, not haha moment, <laughs> just aha, aha, okay, aha. I said aha because I'm French. We put oh, yeah, H in everything, okay? Uh, Thank uh, you, all the French speaking people. Yeah. They understand. Woo! Yeah. I know I'm not alone. Thank Woo. you. Okay, uh, so yeah. I, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Another ah uh, ah. Uh. Uh, uh, ha. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, for me, it was, it was, um, well, you've, most of you guys know this story. Maybe uh, some of you guys don't. If you do, you'll hear it again. It's because it's a big part of my, my life testimony. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, when I struggle with anxiety, I had really, really bad anxiety. And I still, ha I still get hit with it, but it's nothing compared to that. Like, I used to have, like, every day these panic attacks. It was very situational, and I'm going to go into all the details right now, but it's very situational, and um, it affected, like, the atmosphere of the home um, because, it, I w it, you know, when you have anxiety attacks, it, it's, it's not nice. You get hit with a level of fear that's really, really, really intense, right? And sometimes you could really start believing that because you're like, why am I feeling all these... Now I would know that it's an anxiety, but back then I didn't really understand that it was quite anxiety, all the physical manifestation that was happening in my body. And um, God, I went through a journey where God was asking me to, to get released a lie, was that I wasn't worthy. And because I didn't feel like I was worthy, I, didn't, couldn't, I had a hard time accepting God's love. And because of that, it affected how I felt safe in the world or not, right? If you don't really know your worth, you don't know your value, it's hard to, f to feel safe in this world, to, des to believe that you deserve these good things, that these things are possible for you, that you can have all these things. And uh, for me, I was just believing a lot of lies, basically, um, about myself. And um, so God was trying, I went through a season where God had, I had done the inner healing and that was great, but it didn't change the daily manifestations that was happening to me until God really exposed that it was like, I, that I didn't feel like I was valued. And he's like, I want you to declare my love for you. And I had to, be, it had to become like a tangible like it, it was like almost like a, a project, like a mission I had to go through um, where I had, because it was like I did the inner healing, but my, my brain pattern of thinking was so wired a certain way, yeah. right? Like I, I would see something, hear something, and, or like it was just my, 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 my thought patterns would just go on repeat mode. And there's so much science now around that, right? And so I had to change the pattern of my mind and how I thought. And that doesn't just always come like a supernatural healing. It doesn't always happen with that. I knew deep down I was healed from all those things. But now it was like to believe. And, I, you know, it's one thing to, we all know we're loved by God. Right? We all know that we're loved by God. We all know that God loves us. We know that in our mind. We're told that when we first become a Christian that God loves us. It's the prayer. Right? But it's, there's, it's one thing knowing in your head and then really know it in your inner being. And you know that by how you respond to things, how you react to things. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Was that negative? What was that worry? What was that fear? That all comes down to your inner being with God and your identity in God. Your identity in God knowing that your love is everything because that's what you're created for. God created you as his children, loved, dearly loved, with no condition. Yeah. And that's where our stance is. And when we're not knowing this really strongly, it's going to manifest. Yeah. It's, it affects our whole day life. And it's, let me tell you, make it very clear, because if anybody tells you otherwise, they're lying. It's a life journey of unraveling and unpacking God's love for you. No one will come and be like, I know, I get God loves me. I got it all figured out. No, not true. It's impossible. God's love is so deep. It says it's so deep. It's so high. It's so wide. It, takes a, it will take you and not even a whole lifetime to discover the, the depth and how, what that means for you and how that would look like and how that would manifest itself in your life. So it's a journey. You're always on, it's like an onion that's always being peeled out. We know, but it's, it's a, to come to the fullness of that, it's a life journey of unpacking 
what it means, what it, the, the, the depth of how that would look like. And so the fact that my reaction was always fear, I didn't, it, that was a sure tell. If your first reaction is fear, worry, what if, seeing all the bad things that could happen, you're holding out of, you know, that's a, it's a core identity thing, right? And so I literally had to go through a season where I'm going to tackle this. Yeah. I'm going to tackle this. Yeah, what did you do? What does that mean to tackle this? I, I, I was like, every time, I'm going to be pay super close attention to my thoughts. And yeah. every time I start either feeling the physical manifestation, manifestation bubbling or I start having the thought process coming, I'm going to interrupt and go like, no, nope, no, nope, God loves me. God loves me. I'm loved. I'm safe. I'm loved. God has me. And that's all that matters. God loves me. All that matters. I'm safe. God loves me. Literally, I did that like, I don't know how many times per day, guys. I don't know how many times. I even did it before, because sometimes I was hit when I'd go into church. And so some back then, this is back then, and I would go, even, I knew it. I'd prepare myself. I'm like, before going, even I'd look at myself getting out before getting me out of the car, I'd look at myself in the mirror and be like, you're loved. Wow. You're accepted. God accepts you. God loves you. So it doesn't matter what all those people in there think of you. You love me, and I'm accepted. I'm safe with you. So I would even do it before scenarios that I know would be triggered. Wow, wow, wow. So I would literally do that nonstop for a season. It was like nonstop. Wow. Wow. And you have to pay. You have to make it. That's why it's like it's like a project, like a mission, because you have to tackle it. Because your thoughts will come, and it's like, boom, you have to stop it before it goes to. And it's like, no, 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 I'm loved, I'm loved, I'm loved, I'm loved. And sometimes you, I felt like I was faking it. I'm loved, I'm loved, no, I'm loved, I'm loved. And you repeat it enough, I'm loved, I'm loved, until you start to feel like it sinks in. And the more I did it, the quicker it would start sinking in. And I remember it was two months later, Sean was like, so are you, like, just, like, hiding it from me now or did something is happening to you because he had seen a big shift and that's when I was like oh my gosh yeah I don't even know when it no I'm not hiding anything I'm like oh my gosh nothing's happened wow. and I I didn't know when at one point it stopped wow. but I wow. guess I must have stopped doing it at one point and I was good it was so wild wow. and I still like once in a while I I go to there because again it's like sometimes it could I had a massive healing massively I don't deal with that level of anxiety anymore but I do do it once in a while like even coming here today and I'm like get a bit nervous okay it's okay God you love me I'm safe I'm good yes. you're not gonna you know I picture myself being up here and being like uh, um, um, uh, that you know and then I had to be like no 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 I'm loved wow. you caught me I'm safe that's, that's gonna be okay that's and nothing can separate us from the love of God. I love, and, and I want to read this, <clears throat> Roman uh, 8, 31 and 39. It's about the love of God. And it says, with God on our side like this, this is the message uh, version. So with God on our side, how can we lose if God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? This is that. This is that. I feel like it's such like a ghetto version. It's like, uh, who's, who's going to dare? Who will dare mess up with one of us? With God on our side, who will dare? And all the mama bears know how that feels ah, and how God could be hey, with us, right? Try to mess up with one of my oh, children. Oh, yesterday hey. I had it happen. Mm. Yes. <laughs> it's been a long time. That's my mother-in-law. <laughs> I was ready to, I was literally ready to jump a few, wrote like a few, and I could just see myself when I was doing to this person. And I did not care about anything. I was just seeing red. I was just seeing red. Anyways, I was pretty good. I went into intermission to, to confront her. I didn't do it during the show, so I was proud of myself. But I did confront her. No one, no one is going to talk to my kids like that. Absolutely not and get away with it. Absolutely not. And she 
you shared with me the experience no. and <laughs> the end, the conclusion of, so what happened, someone, you know, messed up with one of the daughters and you just confronted her. And, and Pastor Michelle told me uh, yesterday, I, in the beginning, I felt a little bit guilty, but then after I'm like, oh no, Harley does worse, so we're good. I'm good. <laughs> So that's the conference. Like, she wouldn't have waited into intermission. <laughs> oh, no. She would have interrupted the show and went and attacked this woman. Yeah. I'm like, I waited for the intermission. <laughs> I was like, yeah. so I was, that was good. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Jean said, because I told him. And I'm him. like, in the end, I'm mom first. <laughs> yeah, that's not it. Not pastor first. That's not it. a mush. Because I was like, yeah. I think the daughter, because she was, a, a, the, I'm like, I think her daughter, the daughter comes to my dojo. Does she see, look familiar? I was like, oh, shoot. And now it's like I'm the martial art teacher who goes to the mom. <laughs> no. And, and just, anyways. Mom first. And I first. was like, you know what? No. Yeah. I'm, I'm a mom first. Yes. And, and those titles come Yeah, after. come last. Yeah. 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 Right. But imagine God with us. Exactly. Imagine God exactly. with us. Exactly. Yeah. And how he has us and he loves us so yes. much. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um. I, I want to pray for people. Yes, and I just want to read this yeah. one last verse mm. to you guys. Philippians 4, 4 to 7. The Lord is near. Okay, I love that. The Lord is near. Oh, okay. it came out of it two seconds here. Do not be anxious about anything. Like, when God says that, it's not, like, it's not lightly. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer, which is talking to God, so talk to God, and petition with thanksgiving, being grateful and thankful because you know he's going to do something present your request to god and the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in christ jesus the peace of god will guard your heart and mind because we know where our heart and mind can do and the spiral and the places it could bring us right but the peace of god will give us, he's going to give us a peace. But we have to take action yes. first yeah. and present our requests to God. Talk to God, basically. It's saying, oh, go before God. And then he's going to give you that peace. You know, sometimes we're just mad and it's like, well, I, God doesn't give me the peace. Well, is, have you positioned yourself in a place first of all, Right. We go, it's like God wants relationship. He's not a gene in a bottle. As yeah. soon as you start feeling anxious, it's like, yeah. poop, yeah. peace. Yeah. Without you even talking to me, engaging with me, it's not like, there's moments, yes, he does. I've seen God's sovereignty over my life where I did not ask and I did not do anything and he moved and he, he intervened and he did great things. But that's not, all, that's not what God wants us, to, how, the only way for us like, to view him, you know? Like, yeah. he doesn't, it's not like a gene in a bottle. It's a relationship. We work things out. And I just love that verse yeah, to me. It's yeah. powerful. Yeah. It's powerful. Thank you, Pastor Michelle, for sharing those practical, practical tips. I hope you learn one or two things. At least one Thank you. or two. Yeah. yeah. But let's pray into that. I think Absolutely. that especially the, um, there's a few things we want to pray yeah. for. But if you guys want to just stand, yep. let's stand and let's just pray over some of these things. Let's put some action into this. Yeah. And let's just pray. I'd like to first, first of all, you know, and this again could apply. Maybe you don't have anxiety attacks or panic attacks, but if there's any worry, fear, errors of your life where you feel unsettled, let's just pray for you right now. God, we just thank you. Thank you, God, you're a loving God, and you love every individual in this room. And I pray that everyone in this room would have a deeper revelation of your love. God, I pray that even in this coming week, that their hearts and mind and thoughts would be turned to you so that they can recognize your love for them. They, they could recognize what you're trying to show them. And so that they can receive, God, the peace so that they can receive the peace. And God, I just pray, God, that everybody in this room, our hearts would be turned to you. Not to the world and the worries of the world and our own plans, but God, you've got good things planned for us. And you want, you want, you want us to do the journey together. And so, God, we just pray that you would just release Holy Spirit, 
just right now, even right now, Holy Spirit, highlight anything. Yes. Highlight anything that they've been worrying about, that they've been stressing over, fear that they've had. Highlight any of those things in their heart right now, God. And just quietly right now, I just want you to, within yourself, just bring God into it. Talk to God right now. Give it to God by talking to him. Talk it through. Thank you, God, that you hear their hearts. You hear their prayer. There's no worry that is too great, no fear, no obstacle that is too great for yeah. you to, to intervene, yeah. to come, and to comfort, and to yeah. give peace. Yes. So, God, we just thank you for your peace to be released in this room. Yes. Yes. God, release your peace. Mm -hmm. Release your comfort. That, God, that when they leave this place, they would at least know that everything's going to be okay. Comfort their hearts. Reassure them that everything will be okay. And we talked about the love of God. As your um, all eyes are closed, maybe you never had the opportunity to say yes to his love. It's really the first step. Jesus loves you deeply in a real tangible way. And he's knocking at your door. And he's just waiting for you to open the door. When you're going to open the door, he will sit with you. Do life with you. And if it's you this morning, you never had the opportunity to say, yes, Jesus, I'm opening the door. I want to know you more. I want to experience your love. I want to have a relationship with you. At three, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count. And at three, I want you to lift up your hands. Rest assured, nobody is looking. This is just between you and God. So on the count of three, if this is you and you want to say yes to Jesus for the first time, or maybe you're here and you haven't been here for a long time, and you want to consecrate yourself again and say yes to Jesus. If this is you, at three, lift up your hand. And we're going to pray all together. So one, two, three. Yeah. So I'm going to invite everybody to just repeat after me. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for your life. And I say yes to you. I declare today you are my Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And Father God, I'm praying for every individual here this morning. And I just break up the lies that you don't speak. I break up the lie that your voice is mysterious, that it is too complicated to hear your voice. Father God, we are one with you. We recognize your voice. We were made to have a relationship with you. So Father God, we remove anything that is blocking our senses, physical and spiritual, from hearing from you, Jesus. We remove any blockage, anything that is blocking, and we speak Speak freedom over all our senses to hear your voice, to hear your voice, to feel your voice, to respond to your voice. And Father God, I, I just release the victory that Pastor Michelle has experienced over anxiety. Yes. And I declare that perfect love casts out all fear.
fear. Fear of the future, fear of not knowing, maybe financial fear, maybe anxiety, depression, the weight on your shoulder. I declare that the perfect love of God is casting out right now all fear. You are free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah. And we're going to pray for the moms. Oh, yes, the moms. But the spiritual moms, the physical moms, yes. but also the women who want to be a mom. I to believe all the that. Future mommies. Yeah, all the yes. future mommies. Yes. Whether it's physically or even spiritually, like yes. you want to be a spiritual mom. We're all called to be spiritual parents. Yes. Yes. We're all called to mentor. So we're going to pray for you. Yes. So God, we just thank you yeah. for the mo mothers, the future mothers and the spiritual mothers. And we just thank you, God. I just thank you, God, for your grace and your strength over their life. God, I pray you give them such a strength, such a grace. And I, God, I, 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 I just pray, God, that you would just renew them. Just renew them as they go about God. And thank you, God, that you see everything that they do. You see. Sometimes with moms, we don't, we, you know. Things go unseen. But God, you see. And I thank you, God, that you are just pleased with the moms. And that you are showing, you, you, you like, I just see God give, like rubbing your backs as mom being like, well done. Well done. You're doing good. You're doing the best you can. And even when you fail, you see, sees your heart. He sees your heart that you want to do better. He sees your heart that you want to do the best for your child. And God hears your cry. God hears your cry. And mothers, we are not alone in raising our kids. God is with us as well. So even in our deficiencies, the grace of God is there as well. The grace of God. God loves those kids more than we do. And so, God, we just thank you, God, for the moms in this place. And I just pray that you just give them a kiss from heaven today. Give them a kiss from heaven today as they go about their day, God, that they will feel love, renewed, and just full of hope in Jesus' name.